First story is titled, Am I the a-hole for saying no to my nephew using my late son's college fund instead? My wife and I, 36 female, 37 male, lost our son Ryan three years ago when he was 11. Before he was born, my wife's parents gave us a large sum to start up on his college fund and we've been putting money on the side for years so that he can use it once he went to college. Unfortunately, he never got the chance and we haven't touched that money since. It's taken time, but with a lot of therapy, we made peace with our loss. We have even started talking about trying to have another baby next year. My sister and her family came to our house Sunday morning, and we were talking about my nephew Stephen now being in his last year of high school. It brought up questions about what his plans were after graduating, and he said college. Though he's not sure what he wants to study. When my nephew wasn't around, my sister mentioned they have been worrying about how they'll afford college for him. His GPA is average, and he doesn't do any activities outside of his studies, so they say they don't think he'll have much of a chance with scholarship. He'll have to rely on student loans and financial aid. My sister mentioned Ryan's college fund and how it would be a huge help if Stephen got that for himself. We were caught off guard and didn't know what to say. With talks about having a baby, we decided we wouldn't touch that money for now and had to tell her no. We explained we're not sure if we want to use that money for future baby expenses or if maybe that will be our child's college fund to use in the future. My sister became upset and felt it wasn't fair we were keeping this money all for a hypothetical child when my nephew is an actual living person who will benefit from it. She said we won't struggle financially with a new child since we both earn a good income and we can always save more money. Which is true, but there's no guarantee we'll always be making the same income with the state of the world, and at least that money's there now. She kept pushing this to the point where it was becoming an argument. What struck a nerve was when my sister said, it's not like anyone else is using that money right now. I don't know why it bothered me. I suppose it's the way she casually mentioned my son no longer being with us. My wife was growing uncomfortable with the whole thing, so I firmly said no and that's the end of it. There was tension after, and my sister was in a sour mood until they left. I later received a message from her later on stating how selfish she thinks we are being, and she thought we would help Steven since we claim to love him so much, yet won't help him provide for his future. I didn't want to get into it with her and decided not to respond, but I still keep reading her text. Are we in any way being a-holes here? We do love Steven and we want him to succeed, but we had already agreed that money would be used for our future child. It's all very conflicting and hard not to feel guilty over our choices. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. If they needed scholarship so much, then she should have been on his butt so he would have merits in order to be a competitive candidate for them. Her plan to fund her son's education is your family's college fund? That's moronic and entitled. But also, there are so many different scholarships that he could apply for. Discover has tons for like $1,000. That would help that I find it hard to believe he couldn't get any. Not the a-hole. Imagine being this entitled that you feel like you can stake a claim to a dead child's savings account. Do not, I repeat, do not give them any money. Good luck on your future maybe baby. And in the meantime, please enjoy your time with more supportive friends and family. And it was given to them by Opie's wife's parents. I could maybe see it if it had come from Opie's parents that he shares with his sister. But this is so outrageous that, I don't know, it's just pretty outrageous. I mean, you've got everything here. Money, dead child, entitlement. Yuck. Opie, you're not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Your sister, though? Who boy. If there was an Aziest A on Reddit award, she'd win. She knows you're still processing a tremendous loss and thought that this was the perfect time to spring this on you and lay the guilt trip heavy when you didn't immediately cave. F her. You are not the selfish one. She is. Selfish. Cold-hearted. Insert adjective that will get me banned from this sub. She told you that you must not love your nephew. Otherwise, you'd give him the money. Well, by that logic, she doesn't love her own child. Otherwise, she would have started saving for his education years ago. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to replenish a college trust for my deceased husband's affair child? I, 52 female, am in an unusual situation and need an outside perspective, but want to maintain my anonymity. 18 years ago, it was revealed at my husband's funeral, he had a pregnant mistress, 
40 female. Obviously, I didn't just take the woman's word for it and stated that she wouldn't get a scent until there was a DNA test. When it was proven true, I was devastated but agreed to set up a trust for the child for college and agreed to let them live in one of my rental properties in a good area rent-free until her child was 18. She had to pay for utilities. She agreed and I made it clear that I wasn't going to do anything else for her or the child. I also made it clear that I wouldn't take on the responsibility of fostering a relationship between our children and that it would be my husband's side of the family's job. Fast forward 12 years and the mistress child got sick and needed medical treatment. She didn't have enough money for what insurance wouldn't cover and reached out to me for support. I reminded her what our original agreement was and to borrow money from relatives for assistance. She said her credit wasn't good enough for a loan at the time and she didn't have anyone who she could borrow the money from. When I wasn't budging, she got upset and accused me of being a monster for not helping a child in need. I reminded her that I already helped her child by setting up a college trust, but she could use some of that money for the costs if she really needed it. She agreed and her child pulled through. Now that the child is 18 and intending to go to college in the fall of 2021, the mistress reached out to me about the trust and was upset when she found out that the amount was much less than what was originally agreed upon. I reminded her it was less because some of the money was used for the medical bills and that I never said I would put the money back in. I also informed her that I was going to start charging her rent the following year and she would need to pay or move out. I didn't care that she was upset because I was always straightforward about the situation. But now my mother-in-law and sister-in-law are starting to say that it's unfair to the child. I don't see it that way because the mistress had at least six more years to figure something out. So am I the a-hole? Edit. Thank you so much for giving out your opinions and advice so far. However, I do see some reoccurring comments and questions, so I wanted to give more info just in case it changes your stance. 1. I am an American, and I live in the United States. 2. My husband and I were in our 30s, and he died in an accident, so there was no will. We were strong middle class but not rich. My husband had a life insurance policy that named me as a primary beneficiary and then our children, a house that wasn't paid off yet. $20,000 worth of his own savings, and two cars that was both in our names but also wasn't paid off at the time of his death. His mistress could have sued, but it wouldn't have been much. 3. The rental property that I let her stay in was an inheritance from my side of the family that was solely in my name, so my husband had no legal ownership of at the time of his death. 4. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law don't know the full details, but they know I have enough money to the point where I could pay for the mistress child to go to a decent four-year school and not miss it, even during this pandemic. They, on the other hand, can't. Added to, also forgot to mention that because my husband died in an accident, that I got some money for that too. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Blows my mind how much family members love to say it's unfair when they're not willing to lift a finger to help. Every time anyone mentions it to you from now on, you're more related to her than I am. You pay. Literally, just repeat yourself. Expected to pay for the mistress kid's college. Unbelievable. The mistress had a deal with you, where you allowed her to live rent-free in a property for 18 years, while she only had to pay for utilities, and agreed to put money in a trust only once, and you didn't give her agreement to replenish it if she, by any chance, need to use that money. She probably got more money than she would have gotten if she had went after his estate at the time of his death. If they are so keen on supporting the affair child through college, they should not expect you to. Also, I guarantee now that she no longer gets free rent, she will probably end up moving or you have to evict her due to non-payment of rent. Edited post for more info. Also, she lived 18 years rent-free. Seems to me that mother-in-law and father-in-law think that their precious baby boy did nothing wrong and that his widower has to pay for their equally precious baby grandchild to go to college. OB already gave the mistress a lot, more than what she deserved. If the mistress wants money, she can take it up with the mother-in-law and father-in-law since they're so effing interested. 18 years free rent and a college fund when OB has zero obligation to this child? Wow, this woman is generous AF. Because if it were me, I would have never agreed to a DNA test and told her to kick rocks. That's just me though, and I would have told mother-in-law and father-in-law to deal with it if they really want the child to be taken care of. I did a DNA test because I believe everyone has the right to know their genetic history for medical purposes. Not the a-hole. She was hoping for a free ride. 
No judge would entertain her if she tried anything legal. 18 years of free rent plus college money that she pulled from before and didn't replenish? She could have saved money or fixed her credit after 18 years of no rent. You fulfilled your agreement. You're good. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for cutting financially my sister off when I found out that I was the only sibling paying for her? I have three siblings. I am the eldest. My youngest sister is the only one of us who didn't attend college. She got pregnant and dropped out few months into college. I live in another state and see them only a couple of times a year. I am not really close to any of them. My sister fell into deep financial crap after the guy took off and the baby, B, had a ton of medical issues that she couldn't afford. In the end, she moved in with my parents. Me and the other siblings decided to pitch in some money each month to help the youngest sister. At first, they told me that since I earned the most, I should contribute more. I firmly said that I will contribute what everyone else is going to contribute. They agreed. It's been a year, and recently, my youngest sister reached out to me and said that she needed money urgently because B needed a surgery the next month. I was a little perplexed. B hasn't been to the hospital for the past two months, and the money from those two months from all of us should have been more than enough to cover the surgery. I kept pointing this out and asked her what happened to the money. She kept saying that money got used up. At this point, I told her that she was going to have to show me some bills, and she broke down, saying that I am the only one who is giving her money, and my parents slash my other siblings asked her to keep that a secret from me. They decided that I am the only one who should pay for everything, because I earn more and I am child-free, while the others are not. None of my siblings have kids, but they want to prepare for the future while I don't have to, because I am not going to have children. So, for the past year, I am the only one who has been helping. What's worse, every time she needed X amount of money, she would call me and tell me that she needed three times money and tell me that my siblings already pay their share. I was so pissed off when she confessed. I immediately hang up on her and refused to talk to any of them after that. This literally happened a few days ago. I haven't sent any money this month or for the surgery. Everyone obviously thinks I am the a-hole. I told my siblings that until they match what I have paid last year, they aren't going to see another cent from me. My siblings told me that they cannot afford that much right now and begged me to continue paying or, at the very least, pay for another year so everyone can figure something else out. I refuse to. Am I the a-hole here? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. There are resources she could apply for. The entire family except for you are the a-hole. Exactly. She expects her siblings and parents to pay for everything. I get that it's hard having a sick child, but she needs to apply for every benefit she can get. To be fair, she may have. I hear medical bills are crazy in some places, and often benefits don't even get you to the poverty line. Not the a-hole. Clearly, they were running a game on you. That's really quite crappy of your family. I understand the baby has medical issues. Maybe that's part of the issue here. But why wouldn't you pay for a nanny so she could go to work? Your whole family is creating an environment of dependency instead of helping your sister grow. One day, your sister won't have a baby to take care of anymore, and she won't have any work experience either. If you give her another dollar, let it be for childcare and let her figure everything else out on her own. It's not Opie's responsibility to pay for a nanny. Not the a-hole. What the hell is wrong with your entire family? This reminds me very much of this AITA thread from the past summer, where one of the non-paying siblings in a similar family, underperforming child gets bankrolled by better off sibling, who is being deceived by their selfish sibling's level of participation, wanted to go tell her brother to pay up after he cut off the money spout. OP, you are not a hole, and nobody will blame you for putting all these people in low to no contact. They're ticks trying to suck your blood. There's no benefit to you. You'll only be weakened and sickened, and they'll keep sucking until you're used up. And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.